Namaste. Welcome to the final episode of season 2 of Logistically Speaking. With this knowledge series, we have endeavored to bring you industry trends, analysis, discussion and expert opinion in the area of shipping and logistics. In today's grand finale, I am thrilled to welcome two very special guests. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Nitin Kosla and Mr. Vivek Kele, both directors of Team Global Logistics who has started their entrepreneurial journey into logistics in 2005 and have grown their organization to an admirable scale expanding to various verticals like warehousing, transportation and also establishing their brand in various countries across the globe. I am sure you have the same enthusiasm like me in hearing the valuable insight on this dynamic industry from these industry icons. Thank you Mr. Nityam. Thank you Mr. Vivek. Welcome to the Logistically Speaking series. This is a series where we share the knowledge, innovation and of course discussion with the industry followers like you. It's really a pleasure to have you all. I'm sure our audience will be glad to hear more from you who are experts in the logistic industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Extremely delighted to be here. Thank you. So let's start the show. started as an LCL consolidator has moved on to other verticals seamlessly and successfully. Of course, we all want to know the success story about, about your organization growth. But before getting into your success story, I would like to know more on how the culture of your organization has evolved over the last few years. And most importantly, how the culture could be transferred to other new ventures you got into. Yeah, so, uh, very interesting question. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of times uh, one wonders as to how things have progressed and when you look back, uh, you want to introspect and you want to evaluate uh, how the journey has been. Uh, I think one of the important aspects of our growth uh, has been a culture of transparency. And we have always had uh, the maximum transparency beat uh, in our dealings with our customers. Uh, now, when we get, it, get into a contract with our customers, uh, when we whatever dealings with, that we have with our customers, they get what they want, what they want, and what we have committed to them. If there's something that's possible, we will say yes, and we will ensure will not will not leave any stone unturned to ensure that our commitments are uh, you know fulfilled. So I think dependability. So maybe transparency comes dependability. And uh, this uh, culture is not only with our customers, with, but with all our stakeholders, be it uh, our own employees. Uh, we have open door policy and any employee has access to us. Our num uh, telephone numbers, mobile numbers, as well as our uh, email addresses are available on our website. And uh, third uh, important segment of our stakeholders is our vendors. And uh, this uh, culture of transparency is also with our vendors. We are extremely transparent with them in terms of uh, you know what our commitments to our customers are and how they are going to partner with us and what are our expectations from our vendors into helping us fulfill our obligations, our uh, commitments to our customers. So I think uh, all over you can say it is the culture of transparency uh, that uh, we have practiced over the years and, and we have transferred that across uh, our various organizations uh, and legal entities. That we do. So I would say you are the foundation stone for your culture, it comes from the commitment, uh, yeah, you can say external that. agencies in general or all your ventures. So, uh, so you know, what's your uh, stake on that? See, just globally, you hear a lot about culture these days, and I think it is uh, extremely important to understand what exactly culture is. First, you make your habits, and then habits make you. And uh, it's it's a, it's an age old wisdom that uh, you are what you repeatedly do. So basically, uh, once you repeatedly do something, it becomes a habit. And if these habits are the right habits within your organization, it could be in terms of your discipline levels, it could be in terms of your mutual respect, you know, how you respect your colleagues, <coughs> and uh, it could be your respect towards your vendors, or towards your customers, or you know, towards, towards your different stakeholders. 
I think it goes in the subconscious mind. Culture is basically that is something which is existing in your subconscious mind. Then you go on the autopilot. Then you know subconscious mind is hundred times more stronger than the conscious mind. So what as an organization we have been doing is what we have been brought up with the values. What are there? I think uh, one thing is your value system has to be extremely clear. And uh, if your values are clear, your decision making becomes that more that much more clearer. And people also within the organization are very clear as to what they do. I'll give you a basic example, like uh, how how because this is something everywhere. Even when I was in US, and I I heard a lot of people talking about the culture and uh, how how your teams interact within your organization with each other. Now, Team Global, I would say, is in a complete uh, state of interdependence where people the output of one is the input. Of the other department, and it has to function in a very smooth, smooth way, and that has been gone in the subconscious thing, and they don't have to think before you do anything. When you see, there are four stages of psychology, which are there, which move from uh, unconscious uh, incompetence to unconscious competence. If you see swimming and cycling, other best examples of that, which are there, I think that is what has been inbuilt in the organization in those stages, and initially. It was consciously done, and as the organization grew, people also repeatedly did right things repeatedly, and now it is gone in the system, and it it moves all across the organization. So I think that has been unique, and uh, it is it is in fact something very special for our organization. That's great. So basically, the value system is deep deep down to the every employee or every team member of a team level, and they have become uh, unconsciously committed. Absolutely, absolutely, you correctly mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next question, the impact of pandemic in logistics gave an experience of both up and downs in business. Has this resulted in any major changes in your approach, strategies, or your organization culture? When we look at the pandemic, it's been now nearly, I think, uh, three years uh, down the line. I think the biggest, biggest lessons I would say. Uh, first, uh, the value for credit. I think uh, that is the biggest lesson. What we take gratitude not for big things, but it is for small things like food on your table, shelter on your head, being among the loved ones. I think these are the simple and basic things uh, which uh, we realize how important they are in life. Second, I would say is also the resilience of your. I think our business could get back because of the resilience, resilience of our people, and uh, they came up pretty strong. And uh, they used the hard technology for the softer aspects of life, like uh, overnight, overnight people had to work from home. And uh, I think they could very easily adapt. Not easily, I would say, but they could adapt to it because they had a very strong. Uh, again, I go back to the value system, the culture which was there. In the organization, and third thing I would say say is uh, how much we depend on people doing not smaller things like labor or I would say like transport or people in your operations who are there who are who continue to work during the pandemic, and uh, so it it changes your entire thinking about uh, gratitude. You're thank you you're more thankful to people around. And which, uh, when 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 you have this kind of a change which is coming in you, the realization which comes, I think uh, it takes your relationship with people to a different level. So I think this this has been just one of the greatest learnings uh, from the pandemic. Commercially speaking, I would say what was the most important thing was to have a war chest. We never knew the importance of a war chest. Something like this happened. We never expected that business can go from hundred to zero overnight, and it did happen. So if you go to March, April twenty twenty, business was virtually zero because of the lockdown. So, importance of a watch is second was your disaster recovery plan or disaster management plan. A lot of Japanese companies have a disaster management plan, and uh, we never had a really a good strong disaster. Recovery plan, which was there. So these are few basic 
these lessons, what we have learned from the pandemic and it has changed the thinking. And uh, today we are more prepared for the future mentally also and uh, even uh, technically I would say. And of course, there are a lot of other learnings which I am sure we would like to add. Was there any yeah. uh, forced uh, innovation which happened, which made any fundamental changes because of the pandemic situation? So, uh, I think uh, we, our organization, as uh, you have uh, mentioned in the opening uh, remarks, uh, is a growing organization. And uh, growing organization, uh, the, the fundamental or basis of growing organization is, is based on innovation. Uh, and we've been always trying to innovate, uh, you know, in a small or big way in the way we do our business, uh, be it, uh, you know, just handling a simple LC shipment or, or, or doing, doing a booking. So there is constant innovation uh, that, that goes on and, and, and that is part of our culture, you can say, uh, along with some of the other uh, traits that we mentioned. Uh, so uh, the, for, there was, the first evolution was uh, in, in our outcome of, uh, you know, the strong character of resilience. So uh, people, you know, rose up to the occasion, and uh, they easily adapted to, uh, you know, uh, to the new working conditions of working from home. So if you would recollect uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, when the close downs happened in end of March uh, 2019, uh, thereafter what happened was all of a sudden there was a, you know, uh, a period of uncertainty. Uh, in our organization communication, uh, we uh, made it very clear to people that uh, whatever be the case, you know, uh, people will have a job, people will get the salaries. Again, you know. the same commitments. Yeah. So I think that gave a lot of, uh, and, and whereas there were a lot of, uh, you know, news items appearing, uh, you know, in, in various publications about how people are downsizing, how people are, you know, doing various uh, things to cut costs to ensure that, you know, the survival of the organization happens. So, uh, you know, we, we did our basic calculation and we realized that, you know, we are in a position to continue with, with the entire complement of staff. Uh, so, that is one thing, you know, that we ensured. So, this gave a uh, lot of confidence to people. This gave, you know, uh, brought about a lot of, uh, you know, commitment uh, back uh, to the organization. And I think, uh, you know, IT wise, uh, you know, we have been a strong users of IT. Uh, so we had, uh, we, uh, much before the pandemic came in, uh, we already had, uh, you know, rolled since last uh, more than five years a paperless office working environment. So as it is, you know, uh, most of our uh, uh, transactions uh, have been paperless. And, uh, you know, so really working from office or working from home really did not make any, uh, you know, much of a difference for people. Uh, so it, it just ensured that uh, there was... Uh, the resilience of people, use of technology, and uh, the commitment uh, that we, 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 mutual commitment and mutual respect that, uh, that we have with our people, ensured that it was business as usual. And we came out as a much stronger and, and a better company during the, during the pandemic. And do you see some kind of hybrid work culture which is going to happen? I mean, there's a lot of talk about hybrid work culture. I mean, I don't know how it works in a highly contact effective uh, logistic sector. But what do you feel? Whether it will happen or? See, I think uh, uh, I was actually taking a feedback uh, with also our network partners and from Google and as to how are they looking at this new new way of working? The new normal. The, the yeah, new yeah, normal. Yeah, the new normal. Yes. Whatever, whether it's normal or not, I don't know, but <laughs> it's a new way of working. Right. And uh, in fact, a lot of managers are not liking this work from home. But the staff down the line, they would like to have this. Now, this work from home facility is becoming like a perk, which is there. Like you used to have your allowances which were there. So this is one of the allowances which the staff expects to have because they have got used to it. So I think there's nothing wrong with it, to be honest, uh, to have a hybrid model of working. And it will work only in organizations which are highly disciplined and uh, who have good control systems and mechanisms which have been set and uh, where the HR departments are also very strong in terms of training the people and establishing the right accountability also of the people. So I think uh, there's, a, there's a bigger element of trust what goes into this uh, model and you, have, you should trust your people, why, why should you not? And really very much in trusting your people. But uh, at the same time you need to have your controls in place. 
and your levers of control have to be very clearly defined. And I think if you have this, there is nothing wrong in having me having it. Basically, then you could read how if it is a very well structured organization, yeah. it can work. It will work. I would say not. I would say it will definitely work, and it should be there because uh, we more and more people are talking about work-life balance today. Yeah. And uh, if you can achieve something, it's a big learning. It's a big uh, positive coming out of this pandemic, this work from home, because we never thought it was that easily possible. So I think uh, why should not everybody enjoy the benefit of that? Great. Now from uh, pandemic to technology. Uh, how does the technology enable business continuity and growth for the global logistics? And what new technology trends did you adopt and which you think which are here to stay? By default, this question goes to Vivek. He's a technology <laughs> man of being lot, I try to. Okay. In, in my, my small ways, I, I try to do my best. <laughs> I can say like uh, he's calling me as uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, uh, of course. <laughs> So, that various trends in, uh, in a trend, uh, changing trends in technology. Firstly, we have moved away from a desktop culture. You know, now most of our employees are equipped with a laptop, so that gives them the you know freedom and liberty to operate from anywhere. So, I, I think that is one big trend, you know, a change in trend. Now, I think second, what we have seen is we have uh, you know uh, learned to deal uh, with uh, your colleagues uh, and, your, and your teams in a virtual environment. Uh, and I, I think one of the first things that uh, you know happened during pandemic is that how do we communicate and interact with people? And I think uh, there were various platforms available, and we adopted you know uh, uh, the, the Zoom platform to ensure that we are able to you know communicate uh, with our uh, teams. So I think uh, virtual uh, interactions uh, is another technology trend uh, that was adopted, uh, or there was a forced adoption of that uh, during the pandemic. And that is also here uh, for us to stay. Now, uh, you know, uh, working from home uh, is another thing that was forced uh, upon by the pandemic. And uh, people have uh, realized that, I think it's more than the people, uh, people as well as the organization, both have equally uh, realized that it's possible to work from home. Now, does every employee or does every, you know, department head want that to happen in that way? I think it's very situational and it's, it's very uh, specific to that. Uh, business unit or that particular department because uh, you must admit here in, in the Indian context uh, that uh, you know a lot of our executive staff you know uh, come from humble backgrounds and they may not have the right infrastructure in terms of maybe internet bandwidth maybe spending for our electricity maybe uh, you know uh, a secluded uh, area to operate from or, or, or to do work from smaller so houses. the smaller houses when I say small, in a secluded area I'm talking about smaller houses and a lot of people are you know are, are, are still living in humble dwellings. So, uh, so, so those who are those who have uh, you know can adopt uh, or those who had this kind of infrastructure, then they're more than happy, and the productivity, in fact, has gone up. Uh, you know, operating from home. But there are people, those who still have the liberty from operating from home, but cannot operate because they have family pressures, they have you know smaller houses, they have they may not have the electricity all the time. So those people are the one who have been wanting to come to the office, and they have been you know during even pandemic. They made it. They made their way to the office because you know they found that to be a better working uh, environment or so. And, and I think what has also happened is uh, you know uh, virtual meeting is this concept is not even you know limited within the organization. Uh, we we have even having virtual meetings uh, with the customers. Uh, we even have virtual meeting with our network partners. Uh, so uh, you know that has greatly impacted uh, our travel bill. You know, okay. frankly speaking. Uh, so you know, uh, maybe you could meet more people also because of that. Uh, yes, because what happens is then eventually you get uh, you have more uh, you know hours in a day at your disposal because a lot of time goes for traveling. Uh, be it, you know whether when you're traveling within the city, it's a domestic commute, uh, or, or when you're traveling internationally, it is you know few hours or sometimes days of traveling. So all those were cut down, and then you could you know uh, use those uh, you know uh, the, that extra time available with effectively interacting with more people or doing other things that you like, maybe in terms of your passion or in terms of uh, you know getting involved in other business activities. So. That's a great answer. Thank you. Thank you. People you know rose up on the occasion, and uh, they. Is it adapted to? Uh, you must admit here in, in the Indian context uh, that uh, you know, a little short of making a formal announcement. Oh, so so you can know, expect some big news. Uh, I would say big news, but uh, okay. uh, uh, okay. there would be some news. Okay. Okay. Something.
all the forces of the nature conspire and help you to achieve. Hindi movie, if you really ask me, Shole has been my oh. favorite fan. Okay. It's been all time favorite fan. I'm also a great Amita fan. Okay. And uh, one of my favorite movies has been The Good, Bad and the Game. 